Okay. I wrote something down while we was in praise. And sometimes it's all about our attitude. Um, <clears throat> how we look at things. But I think something that we really need to, 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 to realize when we're dealing with God, we need to do it His way and not our way. And I wrote this down because I've heard it before. Instead of telling God about your problem, tell your problem about your God. Amen? See, you can say almost the same words, but they have different meanings. So we need to tell our enemy, we need to tell our problem about how great our God is. I've been telling you to come expecting. And I don't know what God's done to me. It's just awesome what he's done. I can't describe it with words. My wife wished I would just sleep in. And now I can't. He's renewed my strength. I didn't know it was going to happen that day. But it did. So on your journey, even if you're headed for a dumpster, see how God can turn things around. And so many times, people, we try to find formulas to make that happen. Well, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to make this happen. No, it's not a formula. It's how great your God is and how great his mercy is for you. Amen? And if you don't seek, if you don't ask, and you don't knock, you're not going to get anything. And that's the only thing that I kept doing in my life. I kept asking, I kept seeking, I kept knocking on that door to God to, to open the door. And he did. So never stop those things. Realize what the battle is, if it's your battle or God's battle. And if you've done all you can do, then let God have it. Because you are going to wear yourself out. How many of you went through something like that and you just wore yourself out and finally you said, okay, God, you do it. And he did it. we got to learn to surrender. This is the way life's going to be. Then God, make it the best it can be. Tell your problems about your God. Don't continue to tell your God about your problems. He already knows them. But speak to your problems about how great your God is. I'm glad you remember that. About that little baby. Just think about it. Within how many hours that baby could have been dead? And God cared for it. And he cares for you. If he didn't care for you, he showed us how much he loved us when he went to that cross. Amen? Come expecting. Expect in your own house. Expect God to do great things. Don't exhort the problem. Exhort your God. Amen? You know, Wednesday night we was talking about <clears throat> Elijah and Ahab and um, Je Je uh, what's her name? The lady, the prop, the the mean lady, Jezebel. You know, she spoke that she, if she if God didn't deal with Elijah, that uh, it would be taken out on her if her words wasn't fulfilled, and then God ended up feeding her to the dogs. Okay? What I want to just search your mind because I want you to search your mind and I may be all wet, but God's been showing me things about, you know, we think about bad prophets, we think about prophets that aren't of God, but you have to you have to stop and think. What about people that are evil? Aren't they just prophets speaking the wrong thing, leading us the wrong direction? Aren't they just bad prophets? That's what happened to, to um, Elijah. 
he come along, Obadiah come along and says, there you are, you troublemaker. And Elijah said, I'm not the troublemaker. You're the one that's not following God. But isn't that what the world is telling us today? Christians are troublemakers, and we're just trying to be the, bring the word of God. But I think sometimes we're just looking for false prophets in the church when they're all out there in the world, politicians, people that are wanting one world government, and God's against that. And we need to understand that. And we need to be about doing God's way and His will. You know, even, even in the prayer that He taught His disciples, let, your will, let my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what God proclaimed. Amen? Okay, that was free. But it's just been on my heart, and I asked those that was there, you know, we're looking for we're looking for false prophets, but sometimes they're not in the church, they're in the world. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And just what we said. Don't tell God about your problems. Tell your problem about how great God is. When I spoke to that atheist, he told me he was an atheist. And we went on, and I tried not to go too far with him, you know. But I says, I'll tell you one thing. One day you and I are both going to know the truth. That's all I can tell you. And his thing was, there's so many bad people in the church. This is a hospital. That's where they need to be. They're going through problems. And we need Jesus, you know. How many of you got everything right in your life? Hello? Okay. Problem solved. And then we need to take the Word of God and renew our minds, wash it so that it sinks into our hearts. Amen? So with all that being said, I think that we need to more than ever be taking the gospel to, to the people through these times and we're going to show a few videos of the video that we showed on Wednesday night because you need to hear it I don't care if you don't agree with it that's up to you but you need to hear this what you do with it is your business I'm not here to condemn you I'm here if you need to repent if we all need to repent then we need to repent and get it right with God amen and I told you, I'm not going to put up with bickering. I'm not going to put up with all that stuff. We're going to nip it in the bud because these are serious times. And God has given us a mission. And, you know, the people in Israel grumbled and complained. They never got to the promised land. The very thing that they said would happen, that God brought them out here to die, the very same thing they said happened to them. They wandered until they died. So be careful with your words. They're very important. They'll kill you. Because life and death is in the tongue. Speak life. Tell your problem how big your God is. And you got to believe that there is nothing impossible with Him. What are you out if you believe God for it? What are you out? I, I was never going to stop praying for my diabetes. Sugar was 119 this morning, or 115 this morning. It went low yesterday. I can't figure it out. But I'm happy. And God did it in one night. Boom. So don't give up. I don't care what you're going through. Our God is a God that cares for your every need, and you've got to realize that He loves you. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. I want you to go to Matthew 28. <clears throat> I 
We was talking about around Easter time, the resurrection and how Jesus showed himself. And that's what I was preaching that morning. He showed himself to all his disciples. And I believe that never ends. I believe God wants to show himself to you, that he is real, that he does love you, that he died on a cross and he is alive. And he can be life in your life if you let him. He can take out the negative. He can take out the bad habits. He can take all those things out. How many of you know that there's sometimes in your life you've been freed from something and you woke up that morning and think, whoa, where'd that go? And you didn't have a thing to do with it. God just did it. And you've got to believe that God's going to do that no matter what you're going through, no matter what's in your life, that God can change your circumstances that you'll know a person. I had, I had a uh, text from a foster child we had years ago. Man, was he a hard kid to deal with. He was a drug addict. And now he told me this week, he called me and he said, I want you to pray. Me and my wife are talking about praying about being foster parents. My first thing was, don't do it. But he's been there. He's done it. He said, we're not going to jump into it. We want you to pray. And I can't remember how many years. It had to be over 30 years ago that we had this boy in our life. In our life. And it's like, wow, God, you are awesome. He called me a few years ago and said, how you doing, Adam? And he says, I, well, I'm a drug addict and I'm homeless. I said, you need to get help. And he did. And now he's got a wife and then a child. And he's talking about Jesus. He was a, I don't know what you call him, in uh, the Red Cross. Uh, he's like a pastor, but he's not, they don't call him a pastor. But anyway, Salvation Army. Chaplain, thank you. And him and his wife both was chaplains. Imagine that. Nothing's impossible with God. I'd just like to knock that kid's head off when he lived with me. Hello? I planted a seed. And who makes that seed grow? God. Amen? So we need to be seed planters. Now, in chapter 28, and we're going to go through all the Gospels, in chapter 28, verse 16, he gives us what we're supposed to be doing. Jesus is leaving, and he's saying, now this is the disciples. He says, this is what I want you to do. I'm leaving, but I'm going to send a comforter to be with you. And you've got to realize the power of the Holy Spirit. You've got to realize how, what authority you have in the, the Holy Spirit. A lot of churches don't don't preach it. Don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in all the gifts. You know, when I come to this church, God told me, I want you to go there because I believed in all the gifts. I speak in tongues. I don't do it in front of you. I use my prayer language. I have done it. It's been interpreted. But let me ask you a question. How many of that would you not understand or think I'm nuts? And the Bible says that in 1 Corinthians 24. And God said, I'm not sending you to teach them to speak in tongues. I'm sending you. And a lot of people wonder why I don't do it. Because I feel I'm trying to walk in love. And if I don't walk in love, then what good am I? Now, if you all didn't have trouble with it, it would be a different story. But some don't even realize what it's used for. You know? There's two different ways it's used. It's a prayer language just between you and God. There's another language. Why am I doing it? There's an another one that, that somebody needs to interpret. It's like a prophecy. But it says in 14 of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, if someone comes in and you're all speaking in tongues, they're going to think you're what? Nuts. 
Okay? And it tells what tongues are for. The believer or the unbeliever. What prophecy is for? The believer or the unbeliever. Get that straight. That's all I got to say. <clears throat> I got a frog in here. All the pollen. Okay. Chapter 28. I want to start with verse 16. Then the disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when he saw that him... They worshipped him, but some doubted. Now, just think of this. His disciples, they've been... We talked about the two on the road to uh, Emmaus. We talked about the other ones, Thomas, that he let him put his hand in his side and his feet and, and his hands showed him. And, and Jesus went through all of these disciples trying to show them. And don't think he won't try to show you that he's alive. The only reason he's not going to show you is because you're not asking. You're not seeking to see what God is going to do. You think that guy woke up that morning and decided to go to the dumpster and that he planned on finding a baby in it? No. It's our everyday life that makes a difference. And we're worried about, no, I've got to stand behind this pulpit and do it. No, you don't. You need to take your pulpit outdoors. Hello? Throw it away and just start being real with people. Because this is what he told them. But they even doubted him. And he showed up with them another time. Just before he ascended to heaven. And then, he <clears throat> and then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of some nations, of some people. All. You know anybody that don't know Jesus? Plant a seed. If you never plant, it won't grow in the bag, will it? Jay. It won't grow in the bag. It needs dirt. And your seeds need to be sown in people's hearts so that they can grow. And you've got to believe that it's going to grow. You've got to believe that God's going to do something. And if you don't believe that, if, if he didn't believe anybody that's farmer, Chester, or anybody in here that's farm, if you didn't believe that if you put that seed and that fertilizer on that field and you sprayed it and you did all you had to do, and if you didn't believe it was going to grow... You're nuts. Hello? Might as well be blunt. But if you're planting seed, don't worry about it. Just plant it. Jay don't go out every other day and push the dirt away. Well, sometimes they do that once in a while. But he don't do every seed, right, Jay? Because <laughs> you're going to kill it. If you keep uncovering it, a seed has to die. To what? To grow. That's why you don't plant seed. You know, in the spring, I take a... Uh, you got to dry it out. It's got to die. Sweet corn, whatever it is. And that's the way you are. You're going to have to die to self. You're going to have to die to what you want in this life. And I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. God will cause things to grow in your life. But if you never plant, nothing's ever going to happen. And that's basically what he's saying here. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. How many of you doubt that sometimes? Where'd you go, God? I don't feel you. Don't go with your feelings all the time. Okay? That night God woke me up and I did something. You know what was on my mind when I went to bed? God, I don't want to get up early. I don't want to go to sunrise service. I don't want to step out of my comfort zone. So what did God do? He woke me up earlier at 4 o'clock and touched my life and changed me. Was that on my heart? 
No, but I'd ask him, God, if you want me to keep doing this, you're going to have to renew my strength. And guess what he did? He renewed my strength. My wife says, you've got to slow down. I said, no, you've got to speed up. It's all in perspective. Now, what if God come and touched you tonight like that? The very thing that's trying to destroy your life, the very thing I was really dreading, and then all of a sudden, God steps in, boom, it's over. And my life has changed. You've got to believe, even it don't happen until you're 65. You've got to believe that it's going to happen. Amen? Did you get the drift of this? Go tell. You know, we like gossiping about other people's problems and how stupid they are. Why don't you gossip about Jesus? Why don't you gossip about how good he's been to you? Because your testimony is what's going to win souls. By the blood of the Lamb and by your testimony, we become overcomers. Amen? Is that simple enough? Hello. I like it better when I don't know. Well, conviction. Nobody likes conviction because they have to change. And a lot of people, you know, I've had people say, I don't like the way you preach because you're always convicting me. Hello? That's my job. That's the Holy Spirit's job. And maybe it's not me. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit. And that's what he's supposed to do, convict us of our sin. And a lot of churches don't want to preach convicting sermons now because it makes people uncomfortable. I'd rather have them be uncomfortable here than go to hell later. Amen? And you've got to get that in your heart. You may not like what I say, but the bottom line is, is that what the Holy Spirit is trying to do. Let him do what he wants. That's why I don't, I don't like knowing everything about everybody. Because then I can stand up here and just preach it, and then I don't have to worry. Just let God, well, I don't worry much anymore anyway about it. But it's just, you know, if, if the Holy Spirit's convicting you, you deal with it. It's not my de job to soften it up for you so you can chew it. Okay?
Amen. And we're going to talk about that. You've got to expect people. You're not going to get nothing if you're not expecting nothing of God. Those people that wanted healed made sure they got to Jesus, didn't they? You've got to make sure you get to Jesus. And if you don't get there, he might show up. But it's a lot better if you go to him. You realize that he never had to announce when he was having a sermon? People heard and they were just there because they wanted to hear what he had to say. Amen? Because they knew he could do something. And you've got to have that same expectation in your life that God is going to change your circumstances and he's going to make it brand new. That's what the resurrection is all about. That's what we're getting to see right now. Plants come to life. Things that was dead coming back to life. Go to Mark chapter 16. Verse 14. Later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubbornness, stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. What was it? Their unbelief. They're refusing to believe what God had for them. He had risen from the, the dead. And they still seen him, and yet they still didn't believe. And you know, we can be just like that. We can come to church every Sunday and don't believe God's going to do anything in my life or for anybody else. And you know what you're going to get? Because that's what you're believing for. You're going to get nothing. People go to church year after year after year. They're faithful to church, but they're never faithful believing that God can do the impossible. Amen? Verse 15, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Does it say some? Or just the ones you like? Hello? It's easy to tell somebody about the good news, the ones you like. It's not easy to tell the ones you don't like, the ones that have wronged you, the ones that have hurt you, but remember what we talked about on Good Friday? Jesus washed whose feet? Judas' feet. Before he even betrayed him. And he did it. Man, that's hard to comprehend. In our minds, we cannot comprehend that. But he says, love our enemies. Don't curse them. And he said to them, go into all the world, did that, didn't I? Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. It's not by what you do, it's what you believe. If you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to be condemned. If you do believe in Jesus, you're going to be saved. That's what it's all about. Believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth that Jesus died for your sins will save you. Pretty simple, isn't it? But look, you're speaking life. You're speaking what you want. Man, we got to learn that. Quit speaking junk, because that's all you're going to get is junk when you speak it. Are we having fun yet? You're feeling convicted. <laughs> And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues, and they will pick up snakes with their hands. I haven't got there yet. And when they drink dead, deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. It doesn't mean you go out and do that on purpose, okay? Paul did it. He shook it off. He didn't go down and pick that snake up just to see if it was going to bite him or not, okay? There's a the difference there. And they will get well. 
Verse 19, after the Lord Jesus said, <clears throat> had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. And then the disciples went out and preached sometimes everywhere. Wherever you go, that's my theory. You don't have to have a meeting. It's just wherever you go, preach. Wherever you go and somebody's talking negative, preach positive. Okay? Do you know what my God did for me? Do you know what my God did for this person I know? You know, brought them from, from a garbage disposal. See, that's a great testimony, people. Use it. Use what God did in people you know. Use what God did in who you are and what he's doing in your life. The disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. If you're never preaching the word, don't expect on signs. Don't expect on anything happening because you're not doing what God told you to do. Amen? Ouch. It said he went when they preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them. You feel all alone? Maybe you're not working with the Lord. He worked with them to perform. To have a foster boy call me this week and say, do you know how many times that's happened in the last year? That kids have called me. And I always say this. My wife looks good for having 70 kids, don't she? Not so much me. But how come women always look younger than guys? Huh? Ponder that. That was free, too. But when they went out, he confirmed his word by signs that accompanied it. Accompanied it. What is it? His word. God will do something if you do something. If you don't do nothing, then don't expect, if you're not using his word, don't expect nothing to happen. But if you're using his word, things will happen. Amen? Luke 24. Verse 36. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking he was a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why, why do doubts rise in your minds? Where does your doubt rise in? We talked about this not to, in your mind. You have trouble hearing God's voice? Well, you don't have trouble hearing the enemy's voice. Hello. Think on God's word. They arise in your mind. Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh or bones. As you see, I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they, were, and while they still did not believe, it was because of joy and amazement. And he asked them, Do you have anything to eat? Here he goes, showing them one thing after another. And they gave him a piece of, piece of broiled fish, and he took it and he ate it in their presence. And he said to them, Do you see how much he will do for you if you just ask, if you'll seek, if you'll knock? He didn't come condemning them. He, he rebuked them. He said, where's your faith? Why are you guys full of doubt? What do you think he would stand and say here today? Why do you got things going on in your life? What do you think he would say to you? That's between you and him. And he, verse 44, he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. 
Then he opened their minds. You know, sometimes we need our minds open to God's things, to recognize them, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit doing that. You can read a verse forever, and one day you read it, and bingo, it makes sense to you. He opened, you better be praying God opens our minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is <clears throat> what is written. Christ will, be, will suffer and raise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning with Jerusalem. And all <clears throat> you are all witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power. How many of you got any power? And sometimes we got it and we don't know it. Exactly. But the bottom line is, if you don't know you got it, then you're not going to walk in that authority. Hello? I had that little boy that was, he was demon-possessed. But he would not say things in front of me. I didn't know why. I, it just baffled me. He'd say it in front of my wife. I got more power in me than you have in you. He would tell my wife, my kids that, the neighbors that. But he would never say it to me. And when I come in, he would calm down. Because he knew that I didn't know I had authority. And he wouldn't manifest in front of me. But he was everybody else. I couldn't understand why. And finally, God opened my eyes. He had equipped me with the power to take care of him. And he did. He got drove out. And the caseworker says, what would you do to him? My wife said, we prayed. Well, I prayed too, but what would you do to him? That's the evidence we were talking about. Amen? I want to get through this part. You are witnesses of these things, and I'm going to send <clears throat> you what the Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And when he had led them out to the vicinity of Beth Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And when he was blessing them, he left them, and he was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Some of you are saying, I wish he'd get done. When God touches your life, you're going to want to be in his presence. Amen? They stayed. Why? Because God was there. They seen the great thing. And John, he told Peter at the end, I'm going to sum this up. He told people, Peter reinstated him. Peter had denied him three times. And Jesus restated him three times. And he'll do it to you if you've denied him, if you've cursed him, if you've spoken against the Holy Spirit and everything. And if you repent, then he will turn and he keep telling Peter, feed my sheep. Peter says, you know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Take care of my lamb. Feed my sheep. Is there a pattern here in this? Go and tell. Be tattletales for Jesus, will you? Did you ever have a brother or sister that was a tattletale and you wanted to take them out? Be one for Jesus, amen? That's what he wants us to do. And I wanted to get this across to us that he told us in every gospel that we should go feed his sheep. There's some sheep that are astray that you know. Are you going to leave the 99 to go get them? That's what Jesus would do. You're going to go to the dumpster and find a baby? Wow. That's a testimony. You've got to know there's a God. I wish I'd have known that. Talk to that atheist. I wish I'd have known that then. You've got to give them the evidence. We sung it today. That Jesus is alive in your life. Amen? 
Don't make this difficult. Jesus died for your sins. He died for their sins. They have to believe that in their heart. They have to confess it with their mouth. You plant the seed. It's up to God to do the work. He'll perform His Word, okay? But if you're never giving His Word out, He's nothing to perform. Last thing He told us when He left. Go tell. Go tell about me. Give other people hope. How many have you done that to already? How many seeds have you seen come back and now there's fruit on it? And maybe you haven't seen any yet. Don't give up. Because what God, what you sow in God's Word will grow eventually. Amen? God cannot be mine. Well, and that's the thing, and when first, and you know the reason we don't talk about him? Because we've never seen him do anything in our lives. Hello? And why is that? God is not the problem. That's all I can tell you. You know, I was quiet. I didn't want to talk in people, in front of people. I didn't want to do this job. I didn't want to. I didn't ever think I would do this job. When I was a little kid, I still didn't think. I wouldn't talk. I'd get in a play, and I'd just stand there and look at him. I had words to say, and I just couldn't do it. Don't give me that excuse. That's my testimony. Okay? He will, take, he will make you. He will do what seems impossible to you. People, we've got to believe this. We've got to believe this. Don't walk in fear. It's the opposite of faith. Don't fear what... You know why Satan puts fear in your life? So you won't do what God's telling you to do. And if you fear it, you won't do it. You know what's all over the news? Fear. Going to be a few, uh, fuel shortage, high prices, you know? Food shortage, this shortage, that shortage. Fear, 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 fear. Nobody's speaking God's word over it. And then we wonder why we get what we're getting. Hello? But that's what they want. They want you to fear so you're dependent on them. And this just isn't about Republicans. This isn't about Democrats. This is about the world power that's trying to come in that's Satan and we're doing nothing about it and I'm fired up oh we're not supposed to talk about politics well tell the Jews that what happened to them when somebody's trying to rule everybody else's life because they like the power and I am not going to be silent Okay? And I'm going to show you the next two or three weeks. I'm going to show you. Maybe we'll get out of here early because, because they're only 20 minutes to half hour long. But we're going to have a question and thing. And it's about, it's about the United States. And as long as we're here, the last kingdom is not going to come in. The, the one world government is not going to come in as long as the United States is here. We're holding it back. But they are trying. They've said 2030 is their agenda that the one world power, one world government, and one world religion is going to be in here. This is, you need to hear this, people. I told you if I got to duct tape you to the pew, you need to hear this. Because it's going to change your mind about everything that's going on that isn't godly. Amen?
sin. And this is an all gloom and doom. What, what I'm telling you, and this guy is going to say, says if the church gets off their pews and does what they're supposed to do, there's going to be a revival when we change everything. But if we don't, if we don't get busy and do what we're supposed to do, then the United States is doomed. Because we as a nation that grew up on the principles of godly principles, we got away from England because of taxation and them trying to run our lives, and now we're headed back that direction. But if we stand up for righteousness, revival will come. If we sit on our hands, we're going to be destroyed as a nation. Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, these two women took up all my time. I can't believe. Oh, no, you, you know, and that's what I want. I want to be. I want the interaction. I want. I want. What if Candy would have not said anything about the good dumpster? What did that do to your faith? And that—that's what you got to look out. God loved that baby so much that he wanted somebody to find it. He left the 99. And that's important. Because sometimes it just kind of, for some reason, goes along with the sermon. The songs, everything. I remember when Rod was here, he said, what are you going to preach about so I can have songs? I said, you don't worry about it. You just do what you're supposed to do, and I'll do what I'm supposed to do, and the Holy Spirit will do what he's supposed to do. Amen? I never tell people what I'm going to preach about. Some days I don't even know. I had two or three today. Sermon. I remember time in life if I had to get one. Now it just comes. My wife says, you could probably go in there and not have one planned and you could do one. I said, I know I could. Because I'm not relying on me. I'm relying on him. Amen? Are you relying on him for salvation? What you have to do is believe it in your heart. Confess it with your mouth. If you haven't done that, don't leave here today. Because God wants to do a work in you. And he wants to totally change your life and resurrect it the way it's supposed to be. But you know what? You've got to surrender. That's the first step is surrendering to him and his word and what it says. Do not be just hearers of the word, but be doers. Okay? And if I'd have never got pushed in by a preacher to do different things up front of the church, I wouldn't be here today because of my fear. I'm not going to ask how many are glad I'm here. Okay? But I'm just telling you, don't you let fear hinder you because it'll try and you'll let it if you don't stand up against it. Let's stand our feet. Father, we thank you for all the words that went forth today, for what Pat shared, what Candy shared, Father, what others shared. Father, we thank you for your living word that's most important. And Father, we thank you that you're about showing us that you're alive and you're not dead. That, Father, you will show yourself to anyone who asks, seeks, and knocks. And, Father, we thank you for that hope. Now, Father, help us to stand up upon your word so that when we go out and we give it out, Father, we plant it in the ground, in the people's hearts, that you're going to come along behind and cause it to live and cause it to grow. That is not our job. That is your job. Father, help us not to be the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit do what His job is. Just let us be the planters of the seed, Your Word, Father, in the hearts of people. And You'll determine what is good ground. You'll determine what is bad ground. So, Father, I just pray that You would lead us to those that need You the most. And, Father, for this, this one that didn't believe in You that I ministered, I just pray pray that seeds was planted in his life, Father. 
but he will overcome his unbelief that you will show yourself to him and everyone here to those that plant seeds father that you will show yourself strong on their behalf because they're planting your seed now father lead us to those that need you the most and we ask it all in jesus name amen greet two or three people and you're dismissed